Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Afia Ahmed and I will be giving the khutbah today. So I'll start out reading this. Praise belongs to Allah. We praise him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness. And we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Who Allah guides, no one can lead them astray. And who Allah makes astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no other God but Allah alone, no, no associate with Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's slave and messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as Allah should be feared and die not except as Muslims. O you who believe, fear Allah and always say a word directed to the truth that Allah may make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you your sins. The person that obeys Allah and his messenger has then attained the highest achievement. So, salam everyone. This is my first time giving a khutbah, which is exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. So today I plan on talking about how to find your life's purpose. And this is something that I've been thinking a lot about a lot lately as I'm graduating soon from college and I'll leave the familiarity of school. In fact, many of my friends are at their graduation ceremony right now. UT's motto is what starts here changes the world. And I've always had a hard time believing that. There are like 50,000 students there right now and countless more who have previously attended. Can we really say that each one of them is going to change the world? Well, not if we define changing the world as some sort of grand, dramatic endeavor that gets the world's attention. We can't all be Malala Yousafzai or Greta Thunberg, but we can make a difference in our own corners of the world with the unique abilities that Allah has given each of us. So what does the Quran say about the purpose of life? Surah 51 of the Quran, al tariyat or the scatterers, says in verse 56, and I have not created the jinn and the humans except that they should worship me. So on the face of it, this verse is a little confusing for me. It seems like there's so much to see and do in the world that we live in, and yet we're meant to be praying all the time. And then I realized that I was thinking about this verse in the wrong way. While prayer has its importance, worship is much broader than that. One way to think about worship that appeals to me is attempting to emulate Allah's divine attributes. Allah is the most merciful, the most patient, the knower of all, the sustainer, the protector, the teacher, not to mention a few of the 99 names. Obviously, none of us can approach the perfection displayed by Allah, but it's the process of trying that's so important because we don't have to be perfect to do good. Prayer gives us a chance to reflect on some of these attributes, recenter ourselves, and think about how we can try to do for others even a fraction of what Allah does for us. I'll also share verse 22 from Surah Luqman, the 31st chapter of the Quran, which is as follows. Whoever submits themselves to Allah and does good to others, they indeed take hold of the firmest handle, and Allah's is the end of affairs. Submitting to Allah does not imply any sort of weakness. Instead, it is an act of great wisdom to trust in the one who gives us everything, to trust that Allah knows what is best. Submitting to Allah can also mean trying to overcome the parts of our nature that hold us back from emulating the divine attributes. As human beings, we can be impatient, stingy, unforgiving, ignorant. Allah created us this way, flaws and all. Allah wants to see us strive to overcome what makes us treat ourselves and others badly to reflect a little bit of divine perfection onto the world. I believe that the best way to do this is, as the verse says, to do good to others. We don't have to be completely altruistic and unselfish in order to, or before we even attempt that. Just the act of trying is so important and will help shape us into the people Allah knows we can become. Now, I'd like to share the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Shams, or the sun, which is the 91st chapter of the Quran. By the sun and its brightness, and the moon when it borrows the sun's light, and the day when it exposes it to view, and the night when it draws a veil over it, and the heaven and its make, and the earth and its extension, and the soul and its perfection. So Allah reveals to it its way of evil and its way of good. A person is indeed successful who causes it to grow, and a person indeed fails who buries it. 
Allah created all of these different parts of the natural world to achieve their varying purposes. The sun can never be a spacious place for us to roam, nor can the earth be a source of illumination for surrounding celestial bodies. Allah mentions the soul and its perfection. The soul is that part of us that wants to emulate the, the divine, and we need to get in touch with our souls, if we are not already, to try to achieve that ultimate goal. Uh, I say this saying of mine, and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you, and to the rest of the Muslims, so ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah is the forgiver, the merciful. Take a brief pause and then conclude the khutbah in the second part. It's a short khutbah. <laughs> In the name of Allah, and exaltations be to Allah, and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah. There is a saying that the person who knows themselves knows their Lord. We have to work to understand ourselves in order to understand how we exist in relation to Allah, and how we can draw even closer to Allah. At the start of this khutbah, I mentioned that my impending graduation from university has made me think about my purpose in life. This self-reflection has been teaching me a lot about myself and how I best connect with Allah. While I've been studying computer science, my mind is going in all sorts of different directions now. I know myself and I know that if I decide to take a job where I feel disconnected from my work and I feel like it's not doing good for myself or others, then that's gonna drain my energy. I know that if I go down that route, I'll want to come home and just play video games or watch TV after a day of forcing myself to care about a product I don't even understand. I won't want to do anything particularly worthwhile. I want to find work that resonates with me so that I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose of doing good to others at my job. Things that I've found that make me feel in alignment with my purpose include tutoring and teaching, talking to people, trying to understand <coughs> them and help them, and expressing my thoughts through writing. That gives you a better idea of what sort of paths I could consider that allow me to do these things, to feel energized and in harmony with my soul. So take some time to reflect on your strengths. What energizes you? If you're not sure, ask someone around you. Sometimes others can see us more clearly than we see ourselves. And we also need to have more conversations about our purpose. The capitalist society we live in encourages us to be complacent and even work for causes that oppose what we believe in. One of the concepts in the Quran is the idea of earning a halal income, and usually we interpret that to mean, you know, don't work for a liquor store or something like that. But, you know, we can expand this concept to other areas and we can think, you know, we don't want to work for a company that like exploits workers or, you know, I don't know, stuff like that. So, um, look at the bigger picture of maybe like what the company is doing and see if you like align with their values. I do want to briefly recognize that Allah has given me the privilege to even be able to consider these questions and I want to honor that gift by living my life in a way that is devoted to helping others, especially those who may not have the same privilege, who may even be fighting just to survive. And on that note, I'd like to close out with a dua for the people of Palestine. May Allah right the injustices that have been done to them and free them from oppression. Amen. Amen. Allah commands justice, the doing of good, and liberality to kith and kin. And, he, and Allah forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. Allah instructs you that you may remember. Remember Allah the supreme in glory, and Allah will remember you. And be thankful to Allah, and Allah will increase you in bounty. And seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. And have taqwa of Allah, God-fearing, devoutness, piety. Allah will make for you a way out of your issues. Establish the prayer. And thank you all for listening. And Joma Mubarak. Zakallah. Afia, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. That was great. You know, uh, thanks for taking the time to do that. Thanks for taking the time to uh, to present uh, your thoughts and chuppah. I think it's very timely and very helpful. You know, I um, I don't know how you feel. You know, you're a graduate from college, you're talking to a bunch of people from different stages in life. But what you what you said is is important and relevant, even for uh, for everyone at all stages. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, this time is a very good football. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah.
so the announcements for upcoming, uh, what's happening, guys. So most importantly, <coughs> there is a community survey going on. It's out there. Go to the website. And it's very important that you uh, fill that out if you can. Uh, well, that basically will give um, basically Muslim space an idea of what is going on, what's missing, or how to create more programming or customize existing programming to help you um, going forward. So please go to the website, fill that out. Very important. Uh, so Ramadan's over, Eid Mubarak, everyone kind of late now, but Ramadan went pretty well. Um, Muslim Space gave over uh, almost $4,000 in terms of Zakat, Fitr, uh, Zakat al-Fitr and Fidya, and uh, there was a significant component of the program went to a specific program, uh, monies that went to uh, the Muslim Prison Support Project. Uh, Chaplain Usama has been going to the prisons nearby and, and uh, working with the prisoners over there. Uh, in Ramadan, there are over 30 live dhikr sessions, 30 live Quran recitations, nine interactive youth events, uh, over pe people from over 40 cities around the country and around the world uh, tuned in for these programs. Uh, over 50 hours of digital content were added, uh, and there were over 22 different speakers and guides who joined. So it was a, 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 a wide-ranging Ramadan and online uh, for Muslim space. Uh, don't forget, every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, Chaplain Usama has uh, office hours. Uh, it's an opportunity to check in, uh, just check in with him, talk about anything that comes up, anything's on your faith path, uh, any life challenge, anything with spirituality. Uh, the chaplaincy services are open to all, uh, and not just for those who are having trouble. Uh, next event coming up is next Friday. There's a book club at 6.30 p.m. online. The book is going to be The Quiet Revolution by Layla Ahmed. It's a probing study of the veil's recent return from one of the world's foremost authorities on Muslim women. And the book basically reaches surprising conclusions about contemporary Islam's place in the West today. Last thing, on May 30th, on Sunday, uh, there's going to be a Muslim space graduation dinner for those seniors, high school seniors who are graduating. Uh, it's just, it'll be a celebration for them, their families, and for the community. It's going to be online on Zoom this time. Uh, hopefully next year it'll be in person. It'll be on Sunday, May 30th, 6 p.m. Uh, for those of you who know any seniors, seniors who are graduating, there is an essay contest, $500 scholarship if you win. So it's a lot of money, 500 bucks. So there's a form to fill out, go to the website, check it out. So you know anyone who is graduating this year, they have to write an essay, submit it, 500 bucks on the line. And that's it. So good to see you all here, guys. Is there any...